Before we dive in too deep into web services and start building examples, there are a couple more examples I'd like to go over. There are two main protocols that we'll cover as we build out web services and ServiceNow, SOAP and REST. Both do pretty much the same thing, access web services. And there are some really good resources on the internet if you wish to go deep on either of these. We're going to keep it high level for this overview. In case you're wondering, we will cover another popular protocol, GraphQL, in a later video. Okay, let's take a look at SOAP first. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP offers a number of security extensions and built-in error handling. On the downside, it is XML only, so all requests and responses must be in XML. That can be a bit complex, and the payloads tend to be a little larger than the counterpart protocol REST, which we'll get to in a minute. SOAP is made up of an envelope, which contains a header and a body. The header contains one or more header blocks, and the body contains one or more elements. When dealing with SOAP, we'll first need to download or reference a WSDL, spelled W-S-D-L. It stands for Web Service Definition Language. This is specific to each API we will be accessing. For example, each table in ServiceNow has its own WSDL defined. You access this by adding question mark WSDL to the URL. The WSDL defines the data structure layout and functions available to interact with the API. SOAP is still available, but many services now favor REST APIs. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It came after SOAP and attempted to simplify many of the things from SOAP. Unlike SOAP, it can accommodate XML, JSON, HTML, and plain text protocols. REST uses HTTP methods to interact with the remote system. These include GET to read a resource, POST to create a new resource, patch to update a resource without affecting any other items. For example, if we wanted to update the first name on a user record, we can use patch and only send the first name. Put, on the other hand, updates an existing resource or creates a new one if it doesn't exist. But unlike patch, you need to send all the information. In that previous patch example, we only needed to update the first name. With put, we still need to send all the other fields with their existing values. And of course, delete to remove a resource. REST is fairly fast to implement with easy to use tools in the ServiceNow platform. Another benefit of REST is that it can be versioned. For example, let's say we deployed a custom REST API that accepts two parameters, and then later we discover we needed three. We can add a version to the URL so older systems continue to use the original v1 unaffected, while we implement and deploy the new v2 with three parameters. If no version is specified, the latest is implied, so think through versioning requirements before realizing later that we need to make a lot of system updates. There is no right or wrong protocol when it comes to SOAP and REST. Some of it comes back to the earlier video about what the remote system has to offer. If only SOAP is available, then SOAP it is. If both SOAP and REST are offered, most people prefer REST to simplify the implementation and maintenance. The examples used in the next few videos use REST. Links to some SOAP videos will be provided in the description. While many are quite old and predate Integration Hub and modern credential details, they should provide sufficient information to help get you started. Here are a few more terms we want to be familiar with as we build sample REST integrations. They are query parameters, path parameters, headers, and the request body. These deal with how information is passed to the REST API. The first is a query parameter. This is the part of the URL that often has the format of name equals value. In this example, the request API can look at the query parameter to determine two query parameters have been passed, ID with a value of 10 and count with a value of three. 
Another common one is path parameters. These appear as part of the endpoint itself. They are not optional and order is very important. The docs for such path parameter might look something like this. This tells us that the table API needs a table name followed by a sysid. Header parameters are sent as part of the HTTP request itself. These are commonly used for passing authentication information, such as an authorization token. Although you may see tokens and keys sent as query parameters too. Request bodies are frequently used with post, put, and patch methods. In this example of a JSON body, we can see the names and values of a fairly simple request body. Each web service has specific documentation on how the various parameters are used, so be sure to read carefully. Another thing to point out is that every table on the Now platform automatically has a SOAP and REST API. There's no need to create any connections, and it's easy to interact with the ServiceNow tables from another system. This is not always the case with some other software platforms. Now that we have the overview, let's take a look at how we might use these with some built-in ServiceNow APIs.